Hi friends. Happy Saturday and happy Bloom with Grace Palooza. We are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. I don't know about you, but fall is one of my favorite times of the year. And when I saw this Got Candy collection, I knew that I had to share some really fun, creative things with our artwork. And these are cards, but these could easily be transitioned into scrapbook layouts. In fact, if you don't have Tina's layouts yet, oh my goodness, you guys, you have to get these layouts. And she used the paper pack. She actually used, you can get the bundle because the bundle is a great value. Not only do you get the paper and all these fun sticker compliments, but you also get the stamp set. And I'm gonna share with you what I did with the stamp set. But aren't these so fun? Look at how precious these stackable stickers are. And in Tina's layouts, you get four double page layouts. And this is the last one. Aren't they so cute? Oh my goodness. And so this is the stamp set that I'm gonna share with you today. It is the Gnome Spooky stamp set and it comes with thin dies because who doesn't love gnomes right now? And then this is the stamp set that comes in the bundle that I also used. And you can get the paper pack, the stamp set, and those adorable, I, don't, I didn't put them on my table, but they are the sequence and the shaker elements. Isn't that so fun, you guys? So this Halloween treat bag is something that I'm gonna be teaching next month in our Comfort and Joy Palooza. This happens to be a Halloween one, but I'm gonna show you how to turn this into a Christmas or holiday gift card purse. And the gift card goes back here. How fun is that? So you definitely wanna join our Palooza next month so that you can learn how to make this. But isn't this so cute to use for Halloween too? I have a couple of friends that have birthdays in November or in October, and this is gonna be so cute to just give them a cute little gift card. So anyway, let's get back to this set. I get so excited that I kind of digress when it comes to all of this fun artwork, but aren't these cards so adorable? And look at what I did with my little gnome. I used the stickles in the diamond and I filled in his little beard with that. And then these adorable spiders came from the sequence and uh, shaker elements in that Got Candy collection that you get in the bundle. And then just so much fun that you can do with these little gnomes and the little broomstick and coloring. And this is the one that I'm gonna actually share with you. I'm gonna show you how to create this split on the card and it creates like that floating element with the paper pack and solid cardstock. And then of course those adorable gnomes. Oh my goodness, I can't get enough of these. Just so many fun creative things that you can do with paper and embellishments. And so this is the, another card example that I wanna share with you, how you can take that new border die, and you just saw that in Dana's Live, she shared with you just some things that she did with this border die. And did you know if you are now part of our VIP program, you can now use any of our products in both catalogs for your reward credit. It doesn't have to be a stamp set with a thin die anymore. You can use the dies. And what a great collection. If you don't have this, you guys have to get it because look at some of the fun interactive elements that you can create on your card just with that die. And look at the stitched. It looks great on pattern paper and it looks amazing on solid cardstock. So let's get started. So what I did, this is really cool. I took the square large frame die and I laid it down onto my panel So I laid it down on my cuddle bug 
template, cutting surface, whatever you want to call it, and you're going to run it through just on part of your cardstock. Okay, let me move this stuff out of the way so I don't ruin my die set. That would make me so sad. <laughs> and I've been known to do that because I get so messy when I craft. So you're gonna just run this through. And I like to do it a couple of times just so that I make sure all of those little nooks and crannies get cut. And what you have left is this piece right here. And that's what created that stitched etching just on the corners. And now we're gonna set that off to the side. I'm gonna take this particular border and I am now going to run it through. And this is really key. You wanna make sure that the stitched and the cut line is on the inside. Okay, I tried it this way and it does create a different element, but you don't get that extra stitched etch on the inside and that's what we want. We want this stitched etching. Okay, because now it looks like it's all one piece, right? So turn this this way and one side is gonna be um, for the bottom and then the other side is going to be for the top, and that's what makes it look like a, a mirrored image, like they were cut from the same piece, if, that's, if that makes sense. So let me get my plate. We're going to set that on there. I'm going to get my cuddle bug again. We're going to run that through ever so slightly. I hope you can see this in the camera. And look what it did. You guys, it's like magic. <laughs> Isn't that so fun? Okay, and so let's do that on both of these. And here are the cutting measurements because I know you guys like measurements when we're doing cards. So let me just go over the measurements on these pieces. And so this is the bottom, this is the top, this is the inside, the middle piece, right? So this, this is gonna go like this. So here, let me turn this around so that you can see this better. And I'll hold this for a couple of min couple seconds so that you can see that. And then here are the two bases, right? So five and a half by four and a quarter, and then three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. If you guys don't have my giant inch, ask me for it. I'll put it in this group. I give it to everybody and it helps you understand your eighth of an inch marks. I know, I'm totally eighth challenged, so. Okay, so we're gonna just glue these together like so. And you know me, I don't put glue on everything. This uh, adhesive is super sticky, so a little bit goes a long way. And then this little guy is gonna go right here in the center and you want a little bit of that black border and that piece is two by three and three quarters of an inch, just like that. And now let's run mm. these two pieces through on my cuddle bug. This is two and a half by three and three quarters. And again, I wanna make sure that that cutting line is gonna cut and I'm gonna put it on I like to cut it this way just because it's so long. I'm gonna sandwich those two together. Bring this little guy back up here for you. Run it through just like that. We'll set that off to the side. Look at how cute that is. And see, look at how you're gonna just see just a tad. And again, you want a little bit of that black border. I just find that black really creates a nice accent behind really anything, right? 
Okay, and now we're gonna do that last top part. This one's two and a quarter by three and three quarters. Don't you love all my little sticky notes with my measurements? Okay, and so now this side, let's see how we match that up, right? That was that side. Now I'm gonna cut this side and again, make sure that line, that cutting line is on this side. Line him up just like that. It's okay if the die hangs over. It's not gonna hurt it when you're running it through. And voila, look at that. See, isn't it so cute, you guys? I can't wait to see all the different things that you guys do with this stitched border set because I know you're gonna come up with some amazing things. And then you can stamp the Happy Halloween up here in the corner and look at my little gnome. I use that beautiful stickles to just accent his beard. Isn't it so cute? and he's gonna go right down here on the bottom. You can pop him up with foam tape. For this example, I'm just gonna do it flat because I didn't put the foam tape on here. And you can make this even shorter if you wanted. Say that was just too big and you wanted to see a little bit more of the Got Candy. Let me just show you. You can always make it more defined, especially once you get that piece where you want it. So we're gonna just make it a little bit shorter. So even though the measurements that I gave you are a little bit larger than what you need, you can always go back and trim it and make it a little bit smaller. That is the beautiful thing in crafting, right? There is no wrong or right way to craft. Now look at that, I like that. It just gives you a little bit more of that adorable paper in the background. Okay, so that is that card. This one is a little bit more detailed because of these three layers. So let me give you the measurements first. These are for the sentiment, two and a half by four and four by two and a quarter. And then for these two pieces, three and seven eighths by five and a quarter four and three quarters by three and three quarters. And you are gonna have to trim this down a little bit, but that's okay. So we're gonna take this beautiful scalloped border and we are gonna run it through and get this out. So you wanna set this down. And again, remember there is the cutting line is the solid line. You need to put that right here in the middle and I wanted to have the larger scallop right here in the center. And if you need to, you can always use some washi tape to secure that. I've been doing this for a while so I know how to sandwich things together. And we're gonna run that through just like this. And now look at how fun this is gonna be to line this up you're gonna take your cardstock, and do you see where that is? We're gonna pull that off. We are now going to put this down, and look at this. This is a perfect guide, you guys. I taught myself this. I'm pretty proud of myself, because now I can always get the right line by just setting this right here on top, just like that. Can you see that okay? So I'm literally using this as my template to see this is where I want it, right? And you do want a little bit of a, a border give, okay? So I'm gonna sandwich those together. And again, if you need to, use washi tape to secure that so it doesn't move. I'm gonna bring this back over here in the middle. And it will cut a perfect matching piece. See? Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? And then see, because my um, 
my paper was cut at the right mat. That is a perfect mat. I know. And I, I learned that. I taught myself. You guys, I'm so proud. Usually I have to ask like five people, how did you do that? But I was like, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I just line that right back up where I cut the last one. Works every time. So there's a new hack. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for this one, only this time we're going to just change the direction. So this piece, four by two and a half, this piece, four by two and a quarter, right? So it's our mat. And if you have to, you're going to trim it down too. And now on this one, I lined this up just like that, and I kind of pulled it at an angle. See? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to line this up and we're gonna just hold it at a slight angle. I think that's where I want it, just like that. And we're gonna sandwich them together so they don't move. Oh, I can just see all of the beautiful things you guys are gonna make now with this stitched die. I like the sky is the limit. Okay, isn't that gorgeous? Look at how beautiful that is. Okay, so now we're going to line this back up just like this. Put this little guy right where you want it. Isn't that so fun? Look at this. It's gonna line up just like that. Hold it there so it doesn't move. It might need to be pushed down just a little bit more because I don't want it to cut off. I want it to get all of those bits and pieces. So we're gonna sandwich those together just like that. Run it through. This is where the magic comes in. It's like, get out. Look at how perfect that is, you guys. Okay, now notice this is too long, right? But that's okay because I can just take my paper trimmer, and if I had it here, I would, but you know what? I'm gonna just take some scissors, because that's okay, that's how I roll. Oh, thank you, Dana. See, this is what's so fun about having your friend with you when you're doing a live. They can uh, grab the pieces that you are missing. So we want this, this at its tallest point is four inches, so let's just make that three and three quarter, well, we're gonna have to make it a little bit shorter than that. Let's start with just, a quarter of an inch and see if that cuts what we need. We might need to cut a little bit more. Yep, we're gonna do another quarter of an inch and it wasn't straight anyway, so <laughs> let's put that in. Whoops, oh sorry, sorry you guys, you're getting my head. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so sorry. <laughs> there you go, see, it's perfect. Okay, and so let's, I wanna, the last thing that I wanna share with you, I wanna show you how to create these adorable candy pieces. So I'm gonna get the Got Candy stamp set. I probably should have already put them on my blocks. Let's peel these little guys off. There's that little cotton candy. Who doesn't love cotton candy? And you know what? Um, we're gonna swap. We're gonna put the cotton candy there and we're gonna put that one there. Okay, so I used the Intense Black ink and we're just going to alternate and I should probably stamp the Happy Halloween which came from this stamp set, okay? Yes, thanks Dana. She's handed me my foam pad so I get a nice clean crisp stamp. Let's put the Happy Halloween on this side. We're gonna just gently tap it in here. My uh, Intense Black ink, I just re-inked it, and it is super, super juicy. So we want Happy Halloween right here in the middle. Beautiful. We want our little candy to kind of go up like that. Try not to rock your block. And then we're gonna stamp this little candy down here. And then we're gonna finish with my little candy corn. He's so precious. Uh, let's have him go like right here, okay? And then the magic comes from the alcohol markers. 
So the colors that I used were dull green, the light yellow, and then the burnt orange. And I used the lightest color for the orange. And I, you guys, I've said this before in some of my other videos, I am not an artist, but these markers make me look like a professional artist. And that's what I love about these products. You cannot make a mistake when using them. They're so fun, so easy to use, so easy to blend. And they just are super easy. Okay, so for the candy corn, I did use the orange here. And then I used the yellow for the top and the bottom, just like that. And then I used the medium color on the dull green for this candy. Three in one. Yes, and I love that they're three in one because you get three different colors in one marker for $7.50. That's unheard of. And I really truly believe that these markers are the best markers on the market. Not only for the money, but for the the shades, the ranging shades that you get, and the quality of the marker. Okay, and I did, I'm hoping that Close to My Heart comes out with a, a white marker, a gel marker, but do you see how it looks like there's these little white pieces and it makes it look like the stamps had that white to help create some depth and dimension. Well, I found a, a jelly roll white and all you do is you just accent where you want that missing area. And look at that, isn't that so cute? And then you can come and do the same thing on here and just make a little arch on those and I just thought that was so cute. It was just a really nice way to finish that piece. Okay, now we're ready to put our card together. Doesn't it, isn't it so fun how you can just take these shapes and images and create just some really beautiful cards with it? And wouldn't this look great on a scrapbook layout? I think so too. Yeah. Goodness. We're so used to working in squares. Yeah, right? We are. We're so, We're so used, used to, to working in squares, but this is just mm -hmm. so much dimension, and it was so quick to do. Mm -hmm. And I love that you can create that border so easily. Let's push that up there just a little bit. I did finish this with some old twine that I had in my stash. I'm sure we all have drawers and drawers of twine and different pieces, elements that you can use on that. And then, of course, I love, absolutely love our black and white dots because they just add that little extra element on white space or on a, a dark space. And it's just so fun to just add these little elements down here. You could even put some up there if you wanted to. I'm always trying to find something to use up the larger dots with because I find those are the ones that I have the most of. So it just creates just such a nice simple finish with, with that card. And I think that is it, you guys. Please stay tuned for our sneak peek tonight. Um, Dana and I are gonna give you a sneak peek of what is coming up for November and the Comfort and Joy collection. You do not wanna miss out on it. If you are not a VIP member, you wanna be a founding member this month because, oh my gosh, Close to My Heart is giving you $25 back off the, the bat to go and spend immediately on your next order. So anyway, have fun guys, have fun creating today. Thanks so much for joining. We will see you really soon.